Hey everyone, welcome back to the Battle to the Bottom. Round 2 is over. All the votes and comments are tallied and written. I am your host, Sly47, because yes, I'm just going to call myself a host on this one because the results are definitely not what I'm... Th I wasn't really thinking they were going to go that way, but they are. And uh, yeah, well, this is just pure democracy, and I definitely do love democracy. I love democracy. I love the Republic. Oh, let's get into round two, go over that, and let's see what the matches are for round three. Let's get into it. Now, first up to bat in round two, match one, we have the Valquin versus the Haida with 312 votes and the most amount of comments out of all the posts. The Haida wins with 70% of the vote, and this just went straight for the Haida. The Valquin had no chance in here. And the only one in the comments actually defending the Haida at all was Soulfire here. Soul, Soulfire says, Haida is far more useful than the Valquin. I've played both ships and know for a fact that Haida isn't as bad as people think it is. After the bus, Haida actually feels pretty good. While it's not a tier 7 Cossack, it's not even close to as bad as everyone thinks it is. Well, Soulfire, you were pretty much the only one in the entire side trying to defend it because everyone else immediately went over to Bob Lin's video of trying to get 100k in the Haida because we have Gummy Cat here saying after watching Bob Lin trying to get 100k in Haida, I can't help but give it a vote. I cannot agree more on that one. And Admiral High High comes back in on this one saying after Bob's movie on Haida, I never want to see it again. <laughs> Also, is there a prize for guessing the worst ship? I believe it is the Haida. A lot of people are gunning for the Haida here, though I have a feeling there's some dark horses in the race that, because this is de democratic, there's a lot of good players who have some, they're like, oh, it's got to be this, it's got to be this. And then, because of democracy, we're going other ways. We're, it, it, I'm, I'm almost feeling that I'm not even sure Hawkins is going to win this overall it's it's very interesting i would definitely see and a few more comments on this one we have steven right here we have haida no question about it i have both as i have somehow picked up haida for free in a token event a while ago that was that actually did happen and everything yes it got buffed but then huron got added and made the haida completely irrelevant could not agree more there steven the only reasons i still have it are for personal challenges good call on that one and the historical significance otherwise i would have sold it without a second thought this is my pick to win it so they, they they've got the pick to win on the haida there valquin has its faults but at least can get good results without having to rely on the entire enemy team ignoring you yeah yep yeah, pretty much on that one and finally to round off the haida versus the valquin here and the haida moving on to round three red gaming dino says the fact that this isn't more one-sided is quite concerning and I'd say 70-30 is pretty one-sided on that one, though we have seen 90-10s and everything like that. So let's go on to match two to see what the Haida it will be going up against. With round two, match two, we have the HMS Drake versus the HMS Lion. With 297 votes, the HMS Drake wins with 74% of the vote. Definitely a clear winner there, which means the HMS Drake will be going up against the Haida in round three. Now, when we look at the comments here, Raven 2KF says lion can work on occasion, whereas Drake's, along with Rune and Riga, have been the most painful grinds I've ever done. Yeah, yeah, I could agree with that one. Uh, Rune and Riga were horrible grinds. I can never suggest that. Al coming in here says, Drake, this ship is an insult to El Drac Drake. I'm guessing El Drake. I don't like that. The Spanish nickname for Francis Drake. Yep, uh, legendary admiral and privateer. Yeah, the, the Drake really, uh, especially after the Goliath actually becoming really kind of into its own after the last buffs, the Drake really just didn't. It, it still needs a lot of love. And I will agree, the Lion can oddly work. It's similar to how the Conqueror can sometimes oddly work and everything like that. Video on that actually coming up after this series. And then finally, to round off the Drake and the Lion comments, uh, Bricklord340 says, The Drake is one of the worst ships I've ever played, and after I played two games in this floating clump of metal, I sold all of my British cruisers and focused on the American battleships. While I can agree with that, I think you just really wanted to play the American battleships there. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't blame you. Some of these bad grinds, especially tier 9s, they can be incredibly rough and just make you want to just do anything other than play them. And it, it sucks. It sucks. 
Now into match three, we have the Leone versus the Ranger here, which to me, I was still surprised the Ranger actually made it past this round, the first round, but we're in round two here and the Ranger is getting knocked out with the Leone getting 75% of 286 votes. If we go into the comments here, we have one person defending the Leone, saying, fun with Caleb saying, I still defend Leone, isn't that bad of ship? I have mercy on this poor ship. Yeah, yeah, Caleb, unfortunately, Leone is moving on. A lot of people did not like this ship at all. Going on to Mixton's comment, even if people think Ranger is bad, she is still a CV, so that automatically makes her better than Leone. I, I can definitely agree with that. Going over to Hiromi, over here, Ranger is a CV, which is superior to service ships. No matter how terrible she is, a CV is a CV. No questions asked. You know, Hiromi, we thought that in round one, and yet everyone said, nah, Ranger's pretty bad. We're moving it to round two. Although Ranger does lose in round two to Leone, and Leone is moving on to round three. Next up, match four, we have the HMS Collingwood versus the USS Black, and with 274 votes in, the HMS Collingwood ekes just through to round three with 59% of the vote. This was actually a pretty tight race for a little bit there, and then the Collingwood just slowly eked away and was able to take this win. We have Mr. WB Jinx here. With simple answer here, Collingwood is in tier 7. It can suck, but it can still work. Black is in tier 9 and can't work. But seriously, Black is more than Collingwood. Simply because Collingwood had decent guns, kinda. Black should move on. Unfortunately, Mr. Jinx, eh, not going to actually. Hard pick, because both are useless. <laughs> That is that is absolutely true. I don't even know what from, from six three eight zero. I'm not even gonna try it. I'm, ah, no, it's not happening there. But when we look at Les Vicroy, sorry, but Collingwood is a one trick pony that never learned its trick. I threw everything at it, including the kitchen sink, and there are a thousand other tier seven ships I would rather play. I couldn't agree more on that Les Vicroy and Scott Order. Black is somewhat useful in ranked at least. And actually, that was a common comment actually from a lot of people is that the USS Black actually still can be somewhat useful useful in ranked so when you do think about that with tier nines if they do suck sometimes in ranked it kind of makes them kind of okay because actually when you actually do play tier nine when it's insulated within respawn or ranked and everything it's actually quite well balanced it's really tier nine is just crept with those tier eight premiums and then on top of it the tier tens are then creeping down upon it so tier nine is, is kind of in that awkward position but the hms collingwood will be going up against the leone in round three which i think will be a great matchup between these two horrible ships Moving on to match five, which also happens to be the one with the absolute clearest winner of this entire round here. The Dutch Low Tiers winning against the IGN Yugumo with 277 votes, getting 83% of them. You all really do hate the Dutch Low Tiers. I actually didn't expect them to get this far, and a few people are calling them a dark horse. They're thinking that they might actually just come on and win this one because of the Dutch Low Tiers. They're so easy to get into, so everyone's experienced them. So democracy-wise, everyone goes, yeah, they really do suck. So I'm really dis I'm really interested to see if the Dutch low tiers make it even further after the next round because they are going up against some stiff competition in match six. But let's go through the comments for match five here. Alistair from Rage. This one should be pretty cut and dry. The three low tiers are easy to grind through or the tier nine that is monumentally trash and is a tier nine. Fortunately, Alistair, most people disagree with you. They are going right for the Dutch low tiers. Sam Gray here, people underestimate how painful it is to play Dutch cruisers. Don't believe me, just ask Pig Bay. That is absolutely and utterly true. He had such a hard time. And I think he's got an hour-long video coming out pretty soon on that one. So that will be uh, fun to watch. Hi, Pig Bay. <laughs> but we go over to Toaster here. At least you can stealth torp in Yukimo. That is true. You you really you really can do that in Yukimo. So I guess that's what a lot of people were kind of going, hey, it, it works. It's... It, it's not that bad, I guess, but the Dutch low tiers are way worse. We have Stormfang here with Dutch low tiers need some help. If I had to do my Golden Liu grind all over again, I'd skip the Dutch low tiers. Absolutely agree. Those low tiers are just rough. Once you get to about to the tier 6, 7, it starts getting okay, but yeah, even with the tier 6 within these Dutch low tiers, it's still just monumentally winning their fights in the battle to the bottom. And I'm going to be interested to see how, how far they go. With one last comment from here, we have wood chips. The best kind of ships to be trash ships are torpedo DDs. They at least can use their concealment and speed to influence the game. What do bad cruisers have? Nothing. 
and I couldn't agree more on that. Moving on to match six, let's see what the Dutch cruisers will be going up against. We have with 262 boat, we have the IGN Zumo losing to the USSR Sevastopol, winning 68% of the vote. Seems like everyone thought Azumo was bad, but ran up against the Sevastopol. A few people were saying that actually it should should have gone further, but unfortunately, the rankings and the seedings it got, it unfortunately went up against some hard hitters very early on in this tournament. Boblin coming in to defend the Sevastopol, saying Sevastopol is amazing. Why is it on this list? You know damn well, Bob. Get 100k in the Sevastopol. I, I, I know probably not the craziest thing to do, but at the same time, I think you should do it just 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 for this this just for this but yeah i guess he has a patent pending secondary build so i'd love to see you get 100k in it come on come on bob challenge challenge right there we're going over to stormfang sevastopol it should be no contest and also can talk about how sevastopol can lose to a Gnizen now too that is also true as some people have actually tested it and a tier 10 can lose to a tier 7 god forbid you put it up against a rodney or anything like that uh, Ludong here, sorry Azumo, I guess it's time to say goodbye, it's not your fault, you just met the wrong opponent, absolutely, it is getting taken down here, and the glorious thing, Izmo is generally a good ship, one of the best tier 9s, Sebastiopol is a tier 7 at tier 10, edit, I am incredibly surprised this one was more one-sided, that is true, I, I really, I feel like just Sebastiopol, not many people run into it, it's really a rare ship to see people play in the first place so you run into a lot of his so yeah i i was i'm not surprised this wasn't more one-sided i'm actually more surprised that this wasn't a tighter race just to how many azumos people run into it, it's just so easy to dumpster them but at the same time the azumo does kind of have its place at tier nine so the sevastiopol will be going up against the dutch low tiers in round three let's go on to the next round on to match seven, we have the Surrey going up against the Gustav, and with 189 votes, the Surrey wins with 68% of the vote. This one was neck and neck, and then it just, it wasn't like a, you know, go back and forth as the Gustav clearly was just like, hey, I at least can kind of work. The HMS Surrey, though, it maybe goes back to the previous comment where it's, if you're a bad cruiser, what can you really do? Now onto the comments of match seven. We have Nintendo and stuff, and actually a few people defending the Surrey. Surrey is a cruiser with good HE and maneuverability along with good torpedoes for a close encounter. The, tor the torpedoes of the Gustav are so slow, and they are like sea mines. They can easily be avoided. That is absolutely true. But saying that it has good HE and maneuverability, I don't know, I can... I don't know. And at least the Gustav, you can stealth torp, so you might be able to surprise some people. But now it's coming here, also saying that the Gustav should have a camo saying, sink me on its side. It's all around too slow, and has odd torp positioning. Its guns don't scare anyone. That is true. We have Service 13. I've never played either, but British CAs don't scare me in the slightest, and I am a CL player. That is absolutely true. That, yeah, British CAs, there are very few players that I see them in, and I go, oh my god, I am so scared. <laughs> <laughs> there there are very few players that I'm actually worried about when I see British CAs on the enemy team. Mr. Mime coming in here saying that the Surrey is enough, but just not Gustav enough. So I guess uh I guess that's a, a vote for Surrey. I don't know about that one. Hiromi saying Surrey, but this has to go down to the bottom. Yep, absolutely. Surrey is definitely going up against some stiff competition in the next match. So let's go to the last match of round two. Now on to match eight with 250 votes. All in the USS Congress loses the HMS Hawkins. The Hawkins gets 82% of the vote. Clear winner on this one. Bob's got to be happy on this. But first off, defending the Congress right here, we have 6380 on here. Once again, saying Congress at least has some guns. That is true. That is true. The Congress at least has some guns. Scotch Hoarder saying Congress can float. That's about it. Then it has more than Hawkins. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Scotch Order and a few people, a few astute people noticed um, I might have messed up the title on this one, HMS Hawkins versus HMS Hawkins. Yeah, I uh, I, I kind of thought that I'd do I'd throw a bone to Bob here because he was just like, Congress is absolutely fine. How is this even in the tournament? I, I agree. It's not that bad. But at the same time, Congress is still pretty rough for Tier 8, so I wanted to make sure it gets added in there. But the Congress going back against the Hawkins, it's David and Goliath at that point. 
And it's definitely the Hawkins is coming in and winning on that one. And the final comment that I wanted to say for this round, because the Hawkins just clearly wins. It's just how it goes. But we have Louis here saying the English line, many shifts in this tournament. Absolutely agree. They There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them in the HMS area that need some substantial buffs. And they there's, there's a lot of them going in to round three. So let's talk about the matches once again in round three. And let's get those polls going. Now for round three, remember, we are voting for which ship is the worst between the two. And trust me, now that we are down to the final eight right here, it is going to be a bit tough to choose which one is worse because these are real stinkers. We're out of the woods of all the clear ones. A lot of these matches are going to be overall pretty tight, at least in my opinion. I don't know. Maybe some things have kind of been going not in the way i was thinking but hey i am just your host so let's get into a match one we have the Haida versus the drake this is going to be a massive one i have a feeling we're gonna see we're gonna, i have i it's a lot of these are toss-ups for me match two we have the leone versus collinwood i'd say two incredibly useless ships for their tier so either one will be going up against whoever wins with the Haida and the drake competition in match one going on to match three of round three we have the dutch low tiers versus this is Sebastopol, and I, I'm kind of betting the Dutch low tiers might win on this one. I just, I have this feeling. I don't know if enough people know how bad the Sebastopol is, but at the same time, the Dutch low tiers are pretty bad too. That that one I'm gonna be watching. That one I'm definitely gonna be watching. And then finally, we have the Surrey versus the Hawkins, and I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I have a feeling the Hawkins is gonna win this one. Surrey, it's a little bit better than the Hawkins, but man, I don't know. But we will see how democracy prevails and chooses within the battle of the bottom round three hope you all have been enjoying the series don't forget to like follow and subscribe make sure you hit that notification bell to see whenever a new poll goes live and the battle of the bottom should be picking up here as the polls will be going out one per day here and then i will try to get out another one of these videos for the semi-finals and then the grand finals and third place match on this one because this is, this is so much fun. I've been enjoying it myself. Hopefully you all have been enjoying it. I will see you all in the comments of the polls and see you very soon for reviewing of round three. Have a good one, everyone. Peace.